sounds uh linkedin's are off right now that way we're not getting the bounce back audio it's a five second delay there we are live we are live we are live we're gonna let this load up and see if there's anybody out there who's actually interested in hearing what us three fools have to say we'll, is there we'll, really anybody that's ever really interested in what we have to say no it's like like they're like yeah, i don't know man that's a, that's a really good question <laughs> i mean we're if we were maybe if we were in an engagement pod, they'd be interested in what we have to say. But That's we're not true. doing that. We're, we're we're not talking about any of that crap today. We are talking no. about global recruitment. Let me just make sure we're loading up here. Let's see who's following us around. Bear with me. Bear with me. We're we're live, so you guys could like smile. You could look interesting. I'm not happy. Why would I smile? Really? Yeah, I'm not. It's awful. Really we we are live. We have so far we have one person tuning in. It's probably my dad. Is my dad tuning in? Is your dad tuning in? Does your dad actually listen to you? He listens to he he, he oh, follows man. my I I do these shows on on Facebook now, so he's probably watching. That's the only way we communicate. We communicate by him giving me reviews on my. He's like, I didn't know you were so articulate. Where did it come from? I'm like, I'm really not. I mean, if 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 you're thinking I'm articulate, that's just you're 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 off on that one. Well, welcome everybody. It is the 21st day of whatever the hell month this is. I think it's April. Um, I'm joined here by my main man. Uh, Dalton Daltrey, he's somewhere across he the said, pond. He said, he said my name like I'm an Indian. Dalton, <laughs> say that again. Dalta. Dalta, yeah, it's our name. Daltrey. Daugherty. Daugherty. Yeah. 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 I do this every time. Why don't we just let the guest pronounce say their name? name? And and my, my, my co-host today, my co-pilot for today, uh, Shahuan Hervai. Uh, we'll be, <laughs> be joining me Close. Uh, today. Close we're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. What is up, everybody? It is sometime in April. It is the 21st. Um, we're here on the podcast live, and today we're going to be talking about what's happening in the world of global recruitment. We do a lot of talk here about what's happening in the U.S. Uh, markets are different, right? Uh, things are happening in different places. But first, uh, Dalton, why don't you just do a quick little intro and tell everyone kind of who you are and what you do best, man? What do I do best? Don't know, man. I'm not very good these days. I I, I used to be pretty awesome. Man, I've been deals all over the world. I was uh, yeah, six slinging weeks. recruiters, and then yeah. uh, the world ended, and now I'm having to figure it all out again. But we have had good news today. Let's start the show with good news. Let's hear it, yeah. man. We secured an au pair to come and live and deal with my children. That deal deal great. with the children that so you secure, where, where is she from uh, i think she's from latvia um we just interviewed her there now and um, the woman that she's working for who seemed both perfectly nice but well she's going to be nicer than my children anyway so um, <laughs> can, I, can i ask you can i ask you a personal question sure is, is she is she attractive no Good. i mean <laughs> really watching this. i don't know my, my wife i i have to say no Okay, good. I you have to say, good. wait, 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 wait. He has to say no. I have to say no. <laughs> you caught that there. Okay. So that's great news. So how have you been balancing, man? I mean, you... Yeah, not you're... well. Not well. No. <laughs> not, not well. Um, my, my wife's in, my, in the business with me, right? So we're basically taking turns to work and deal with kids pissing and shitting all over the house like i have i have two kids one's three and one's two and they have no regard no. for the recruitment industry at all they don't get it they don't get mom and dad's <laughs> business but just you know, to chime in there my my son and and sean's a, a new father as well so i think you'll appreciate this my son he's almost two and he's got this thing now he's crazy so when we take his diaper off he will jump out of the bed jump off the couch wherever run around the house and start hysterical laughing, and he'll just start pissing wherever he wants, like marking his territory. <laughs> so the other day, the other day, he was doing it up in our bedroom, and it's funny for a minute until I got to clean it up. But he pushed so hard pissing that he pooped. He pooped oh, on the no. floor. No. I was like, dude, we're done with this. We're, 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 we're absolutely not. done with this game. So let's get back down to some serious matters right here. Now, Sean, I don't know if you know this, but uh, mm -hmm. Dalton is close with our main man, Joe Mullings, down in Florida. Is he really? Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe, yeah, we've known Uncle Joe since see, he's had like four thousand followers. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to make that connection there too. And uh, you you've been supporting him uh, with some recruitment resources as well. Why is it so hard to get people to work for Joe, or is it hard to get people down in Florida? Ooh, good question. Um, definitely, location is his uh, biggest struggle. 
Yeah. Uh, and because he wants a New York state of mind, and he wants that in Delray Beach, and he wants them to be as awesome as the people that he has in his business. So that's a well, difficult trifecta to come up with. Well, let me um, ask you about a market that have you tapped the retirement community market? I bet there's some retired recruiters down there who you know you might be able to get back into play. Oh, right out of uh, Del Boca Vista. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's an untapped market. I think I think community is COVID nineteen. I think your lack of local knowledge is hurting you here. That that's that's that, that's where I'm going to step in, and and this is how I am going to pivot. But let's let's get serious here for a minute. Your business is R to R, right? You you recruit recruiters. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so we uh, we're based in the UK. We've been in recruitment for about ten years. So we work as recruiters in different places around the world. We set up our own business. Um, set it up from Guatemala, moved recruiters around the world, made a few pounds, moved back to the UK. And, and a large part of what we do is move UK recruiters to America. But because your bastard president came out this morning and uh, decided that that isn't uh, going to happen anymore, we're pretty fucked on that. On yeah. that front. So... But, but let me uh, let me ask you a quick question there. Why is it so hard to get recruiters in the U.S.? Right. Why do you got? Why, why do you got to ship them over? Why are you killing us, man? Yeah. And can, why are companies hiring? Because you're not as good as U.K. recruiters. That's what I wanted That's to get to. That's probably true. The majority of them. Do you know what it is? There, yeah, I would love to know the differences, yeah. honestly. The difference is competition. Yeah. Like, okay. you're in a better marketplace and there's less of you. And it, it's seen as a service. Ours is a graduate job. You come out, you get punched in the face. It's Hunger Games for 18 months. And whoever survives goes on and has an unbelievable career. Somebody gives them investment. They build up a company. They sell. They go off to the, they go off to the sunset. Your world is you go in, you work for an agency for five minutes. <coughs> you go home, you set up your own lifestyle business. You put your feet up and away you go. You're happy. Out. That's what I'm doing. Work. You nailed it. That's exactly what I do. I just described my career on it. You literally just broke down my business in two seconds. And, and it's actually something to that because I've worked with a UK based company and there's a different level of competitive competitiveness and hunger. And I've seen that, man. I think that the US recruiters, and I'm speaking generally, there's a there's um a little bit of entitlement, there's a little bit of, there's a slower pace, and that's the competition factor where you're gonna lose. Does that help you out, Sean, a little bit? A little different perspective, a little different spin on this whole thing. So, yeah. so there's that, but but also like it's 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 harder to work in these companies, right? Because they're graduate hunger hunger games factories, a lot of them. Yeah. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So like look at the Frank group and how they've scaled and sold in America. Like it's unbelievable their growth. But it's get them in, who's going to survive, put right. them against each other, and they're all billable. They're not are all they business. all are you all R for R to other to other agencies? Like so you're basically you're taking people from the UK, right? You're taking recruiters in the UK. Mm. Staffing them with staffing companies or whatever boutique firms in the United States, but yeah. So I like I, okay. I, I work within London. Um, I work. I move recruiters abroad. I, we're now, as of this morning, we will not be moving any UK recruiters abroad anymore. No one like, gates are closed. Yeah, gates Close are them. closed. But hey, that's going to create scarcity. So mm. um, that's good too. So no. You know who's our next Joe Mullins? You know, hopefully, Sean. Sean. Yeah, uh, hey, so what are you kidding? No, it's you. You're the one with the podcast. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, 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 I've a few lined up. Right, it's the the client side's not hard. It the, the exploration of working with UK recruitment companies to then working with Joe's company is they're, they're completely different. You know, because you guys like to do the one eighty stuff. Oh, audio check. Yeah, let's get that audio checked. Yeah, it's interesting too, but there's also obviously a lot less opportunities. Recruiters here are getting let go. It's it's a it's a slaughter out there. I know really good recruiters because if no one's hiring, they don't need them. And we're talking in house too. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of good talent out there. So why don't you think about shipping some U.S. people back over? Are they just not as good? I mean, could you find a couple of good ones, or the market doesn't work back the other way? They wouldn't survive in London. They die. They die. They'd be eaten up. No, but like, there's. I think like. I'm, I'm I'm talking in jest when I say they're not as good. It's not that they're not as good. They're they're not they're not built for being in a room full of twenty five year olds running the gauntlet. 
it, people stay in recruitment longer in America and it's more of a craft and it's yeah. more of a career. So when the intensity isn't as high, it, it's just different. So getting getting UK recruiters or getting Americans into UK recruitment firms, unless they want to scale their own career and get into management really quickly, it, it's, it's usually not a good way. So I have a question. In terms of, I guess, how recruiters are seen over in your neck of the Good woods, question. right? Just by the general public, the general, you know, LinkedIn folks and everybody and their mothers. What's the general consensus of recruiters over there? It's improving, um, but it's uh, uh, what one step up from real estate. Uh, yeah. five, five, uh, five steps going from, a, from banking. Yeah. Okay. But let's 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 spin it around another way. You have you have UK recruiters that come over here. Um, are they success? Well, two parts. Like, are like what's the success rate? Because they're coming over here with a with a little bit different angle, a little bit different speed. How is that received by the clients? How is that received by candidates? Because I built my business, and the reason that I have a successful recruiter is relationships, right? I play that long game. I don't. I'm not super duper transactional. And yes, in the end of the day, for contingency fee based recruitment, it is transactional. But those relationships and why they work with me is because how. I operate, right? Do they? Is there any like uh, challenges there when they come on board? When they come over here, do they hit the ground running? Are they hitting walls? I mean, what have you seen? Depends on the ecosystem around them. But like, you're a lifestyle business, so it's it's incomparable. Like, they'll be on major, they'll be on a ton of major vendors, and um, they'll then be told to go out and get the mid tier clients. And um, the culturally, some of them. Like any of the ones that we've moved across have done really well, but like they're usually top performers already in in the UK, and there's a good ecosystem around them where they're like, I have to, I have to, it's sink or swim, and all of a sudden they're getting paid more money than they were in the UK. Mm. Um, girls are digging them more. You know? first, first, you get the money. First, they get the money. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's. Well, let's it, let's. We're in a new a new reality. It is a new reality. And speaking of the new reality, I mean, what are you doing about your business right now? I mean, you know, no one's hiring recruiters in the states, right? I mean, there might be a couple of fields, right? Mullings is still hiring. I mean, there's some other fields there too. Um, but what are you doing to pivot and adapt? So the only thing I'm doing in the uh, oh, somebody shut up their child there. Those are yours. Mine. Mine. I, I got one kid sleeping in my yeah, my angel. Yeah, that's mine. He's, uh, it's nap time. So it better be nap time. You have no choice. Better be nap time. I'll <laughs> read a bit more story, will I? Um, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? We're doing lots of things. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're figuring out how to pivot in America, which is going to be interesting, which will be US centric. So, um, there are other firms like Joe's that we're in discussions with that we've put retainer proposals out to. Um, I learned a lot from that initial working with Joe. In he's like, hey, this is how we work. Like, give us a, a retainer up front that engages us. It doesn't have to be a large amount, but it gets right. skin, skin in the, in the game. game. You gotta have skin um, in the game. And that's uh, and so we flipped to doing that in the UK as well. So everything I've done the last few weeks has been working with large investors who are either in like life sciences or are in uh, some form of tech and who are, are pre-scale. So they were holding back. They were ready for something. And now they're like, okay, send me the best talent that's available in the market. I don't want the bottom rung that are gone. I want the people who are missing out on their bonuses right now. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who come in and set up something from scratch. Yeah. And it's hard, man. That's really, really hard. So um, my team are busy doing that. I haven't had time to deliver on everything I wanted to. But now the au pair is going to change things. So that's one thing we're doing on the rec -rec. It's flipped to more client-centric rather than more candidate-centric. Yep. But I've got a senior hire coming in to join me in July to launch our technology practice. Right. That's oh, awesome. awesome. Uh, and she's excuse me? The tech practice, what's that going to look like? Is it a, uh, like an app platform? No, no. Sorry. She's going to be doing IT tech. recruitment into, uh, oh, okay. into Microsoft. Re into recruiting Microsoft. tech. So, so you're recruiting for roles, not for recruiters at in tech, right? 
Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got okay. it. Interesting too. I mean, I had this conversation earlier today uh, with somebody and we're talking about the concept right now of surviving and it's about adding value, right? Like being a partner and not a vendor, you know, mm -hmm. finding those opportunities, what else can you do? And it's not about the upfront money right now. It's about fortifying your relationship and status as a preferred vendor later on right? Like, why do they want to work with you? What are you doing now to help their business? You come at it, you see their blind spots, right? You come at it from another angle. How do you do that right now? So when the floodgates open back up, you're first on their call list. You stay active. Um, so if the train, keep training for fight day, hey, uh, there's, there's a couple of, couple of different things. We have a recruitment po podcast. It's had 105,000, 106,000 downloads by recruiters. He's got a killer one, man. Um, That's uh, awesome. I bring on founders, investors, big hitters, um, people who own Facebook groups, other podcast hosts, um, and we chat about the industry, we chat about what we're doing right now, how we can survive. Um, from that, that's given me access to really impressive people, and it's kept our brand out there. So in, yeah. the news, in this time, Batman, Batman here is a big deal in the news feed. He does well. Um, that's how I, that's how I, I um but he's a, he's a he's a good boxer in the news feed but it, essentially right now Props thousands, right there. thousands of recruiters are not posting the usual shit they are right so yeah. the news is dead yeah. uh, guess who's all over the news feed yep me yeah, yeah. we have to be like this is the time if you can dominate that news feed you're in everybody's psyche for months. That's so then the, whenever it comes up, yeah. we're away. We're uh, all so on the same page there. Yeah. Two is pipelining for later in the year. Okay. So, right. We're not hiring now, but you're still going to move. So let's have a talk about what, what that job will look like when the time yeah. comes. Let's keep active on that. So that's really important. And three for us is planning for the future. It's pivoting out of Rector Act into technology smart you gotta see what the opportunities are yeah i mean it's interesting too because a lot of companies you know i'm having conversations with them and it's like listen you may not be hiring now but when we come out of this when we come out of this do you want to be at the starting line or do you want to be freaking rounding third base heading from home you know what's the difference there where do you want to be and it's about how you communicate and sean talked about this in a recent post you know it's managing that communication and the expectations with candidates we are not, I want to talk to you now about future opportunities. We do not have something open right now for an immediate yeah. hire. Do you still want to engage in this conversation? Right. And, and how do you manage that? How do you, you know, keep that conversation going? Sean, how are you having that conversation right now? <laughs> I mean, it, it's simple as that. I mean, it's reaching out in the emails. It's talking, Hey, listen, I don't, I don't have clarity on this role right now, but listen, I know it's going to come up. It's coming down the pipe soon. As soon as, uh, you know, we have an ELT meeting or whatever, um, that's going to look like that. You know, I love your background. Still want to have a conversation. I just don't know what my timeline is. Does that work for you? Are you open right. to chatting right now? Does it match with your timeline? What does it look like? And people have been really, really responsive. And listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's been like, yeah, oh, absolutely. I want to talk to you every single time. Like, there's been plenty of people that be like, no, nah, man, I'm good. Let me know when it opens or when you have something active, right? But it's at least you're putting it out there and you're putting it in front of people that, you know, you're at the forefront of their minds and you are the one that's, you know, you have their best interests at at heart so 100 percent. it goes it goes back to the relationships now i want to double back to something that that you said a little bit earlier delta like right now there's so much a talent on the market right and they they have it's interesting it's almost like free agency in sports right now if you're a company that's in a position to hire you have the pick of the litter you have so many people out there and we're not even talking about recruiters we're talking cross sector cross if industries you can, if you can play over until september you're going to be the next big company yeah and it, but it, for insane. anybody who's thinking of setting up as an independent, this is the best time. I have a buddy who isn't working. He's at home. We're all locked up. So he says, what should I do? I said, Fuck it. jump into cybersecurity. Have a look at that. Jump into, jump into Microsoft. Jump into things that are always going to be in demand. But yeah. remember, this is the only time these people will ever entertain you. Yep. Like you, these people would not normally take your call. They'll take your call now. Your this is your turn. You, if you want to set up an agency now, you, you you have your conversations with these people. You you ask the right questions. You study what they do. You be there. Exactly. You be their friend. And then on the upswing, 
they are your client. Like this is a free thing for anybody who wants to settle. It's I mean, it's, 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 so many people are not doing it though. I say all that. And another tip that Mullings told me is like go back to all of the candidates that you've placed over the last two years. Reach out to them, call them, check in on them, see how they're doing, man. Because yeah. two things: one, they, they they might be they might have gotten let go, and you know you're they're a good candidate because you placed them before. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's an A-list candidate you could put back on there. And two, you can ping them and see what's happening in their business. Maybe they're in a position to be a hiring manager right now. I mean, now is the time for that. If you're just sitting around watching Netflix all day and, and jerking around, you're going to lose. Yeah. The upswing is going to happen. Like, but it, it's going to be a different world. Like, it's like, who knows what it's going to be, but the, like, the oil price going to zero today. Negative. Like, yeah. Like, it's crazy. That Shit. is. That is fucking scary. So I don't know. Um, they, People are traveling. Airplanes aren't flying, right? They, you know, it's. I know, but like, are we social distancing for the foreseeable? Like, are people going to be in offices crowded together? Or are we going to have a more remote distributed workforce? What will that change for the future of commercial real estate? Oh, How so will many factors. Differ? Yeah, it's uh, the ripple. The ripple effect is is. We're at a wrapping we're your head at around a really that. Interesting time. Like it, things are going to change. Absolutely. I they mean, it's interesting. To. They have to, and like we talk about, what's it going to look like? I mean, listen, some companies. The reason they haven't been supportive of remote workforce is because they don't trust their employees. So now, two things are going to happen. One, these companies are going to see that it does work. And they're going to see that their employees are trustworthy and loyal. Number two, they're going to see that some employees do jerk around and they don't need to be in their company anyway. But then there's also that middle ground where there's some people who logistically, physically, uh, family, socioeconomic, for whatever reason, they can't work from home and it's not a good option. So it's going to change a complete face of work from home. Do I think that everybody and every company is going to shift to full work from home? No. There's collaboration. There's industries where you need to be there. You need to have face-to-face -face, um, interaction. It's, it's an unknown. What's it going to look like? I think it'll be a three prong thing. Not a four so, prong. I think you mentioned four prongs once before. You can stick yeah, to three. I, I just kind of mix stuff up. We'll keep it to three, and if you have another yeah, thought, we'll go to four. It's okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll barbecue it. Prong. So, <laughs> I think we're going to have, we're still going to have people in the office. If we're talking about general industry or we're talking about the recruitment industry, if we look at a recruitment firm, right? America is further along in terms of trusting its people than the UK centric models are, but we're going to catch up quick now. Right. Um, and I, I see conversations like conversations are so different in the last few weeks. And um, like founders are starting to talk to their NEDs. They're trying to work out like what's this going to look like and how can we attract the best people? So now we've figured out that people can work from home. Who knew? Right. Eh? Um, we're still going to have the young people coming into the industry who need to be in the room because we don't have the management to be able to train them remotely yet. So that True. process is going to take a long time, all right? Then we're going to have the people, because we have these real estate contracts for X amount of time, we're still going to have people who work, work, work in the office one or two days a week, all right? So they're in there. But then what we're also going to have is we're going to have a more experienced, tenured, workforce that is either 360 and remote or they're sourcing and remote and yeah. to like the same thing doesn't matter as much so it, it, we can let them be remote and um, joe doesn't agree with me on this but he might change his mind he likes the flame to be at the center of the flame and um, and and i get it but the world's going to change and people's expectations are going to change you and we will move where 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 the best talent moves well, that's an only, that's an interesting conversation that Sean and I have been having with Joe, right? Like, I I understand where he's coming from. He likes to have everybody on the on the ship, right? He he wants everyone on the ship together. But what's the reality of the new world, and how do you adjust and pivot to that, right? Being more receptive to remote all the time and recruiters, what we do, we all know this. We could we could literally be on a boat in the middle of the ocean somewhere. I mean, you proved that model out. You've you know circumvented the world yourself a number of times with your with your companies. You don't need to physically be there, but the training part is interesting. Mm. Right. When we talk about recruitment training, like how much of it needs to be side by side versus All remote. All okay. It. I, it, it's not the how to craft an email, how to do this. It's the intensity. Like I have a remote team. I can't for the life of me get that intensity that was put into me. Sean could help with intensity. He's good at that. 
Yeah. yeah. He's got some yeah. techniques. You you have some intensity techniques, but keep going with that. I didn't mean to cut you off there. Like you manage a, a fully remote team and how do you motivate them? How do you keep that level of intensity up? Fear? I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm generally just too nice to them. Um, <laughs> uh, That's your problem. Uh, yeah. It's tough. Um, although, although I'm not sure I was too nice to them to say, um, but I'll be nicer now that I have an old pair. I don't hate my life as much. So okay. if, see if this old pair thing doesn't happen. I'm going to throw this computer out the window. That's oh, man. It. Has she been screened? Has she been tested? Jesus. I, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it's a risk you're willing to take. These kids are up your ass. The you're affecting person. the bottom line. I'm, I'm the oldest person. I'm the one at risk. I'm taking it. My wife's younger. My kids are. <laughs> you're, the you're the highest risk in your house. I never yeah. thought of it that way. Jeez, I guess I'm the highest risk in my house. That's that's yeah. crazy. Um, where were we before you distracted me? Oh yeah, how you're motivating your workforce? Yeah, so like, <laughs> it has to be like if it the sales side and the intensity is hard. Um, like, you know, it, it when you're when you're in a pod and you're hearing people doing calls. And you're like, oh, should I or should I not? And somebody's going, go on, just do it, you know. And you, you do your call and you, you go on to your next and you're in a rhythm and you're seeing good people work and all the rest. That's very hard to get that into them remotely, you know. Yeah. So I, I, I think it works for very for, for experienced people who've been through that. Like maybe we could put them through the gauntlet for three months in a pod in an area and they work there and then they disperse into the world. Well, to make their annoying phone calls. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head too. I mean, I started in agency recruiting and there's something about being on the recruiting floor. There's an intensity on the recruiting floor. You hear mm -hmm. people, so it's phone calls. It's the speed of it. And if you start somebody in recruiting at home, you don't have that environment around them. You don't have all those Definitely factors that are, that are pushing them, yeah. right? And, and what are your not. thoughts too, just while we're kind of on that, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer that a great in-house recruiter has started an agency. I've seen in-house recruiters that come out, you know, come out of school. They start them young. They're not the same. I, I always urge my clients. I go, if you're going to hire a full-time recruiter, make sure they were an agency recruiter. You're going to have a different speed to market there. And some of them get it, and some of them don't. Yeah. I hate them too much to even speak about them. Oh, ouch! I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Ouch! I only hate man. them a little bit. I only hate them a little bit. So let's get. Let's. Uh, I know Sean has to drop off in a minute, but I want to get back to your podcast because you hit something that I've been preaching. A podcast right. is such an incredible biz dev tool because yeah. let's let's kind of play it out for everybody. You're you're a sales guy. You're trying to, you know, cold call, cold email, all these prospects, right? They're literally just deleting. They're getting hit up all day. But if you have an established so a brand, the presence online, you have a podcast and you've proven it out with other great guests, great industry pros. You reach out and you say, uh, hey, owner of said company, I'd love to have a podcast. Check it out. I'd love mm -hmm. to have you on to talk about your business, talk about what you're going through right now. They are a million percent more inclined to come on your show and talk about that than respond to your stupid sales email, right? Sure, so you have yeah. them on the show. You're doing the prep. You have them on for an hour having a conversation like this, building a rapport, understanding their business. They understand you. What's going to happen on that follow-up note when you go in for the, you know, hey, let's talk shop? They, they normally approach you about shop. It's crazy. Um, so firstly, they, they, it, it's got better as well. I have to be like... The one thing about this COVID thing is that everybody's on Zoom. So I'm getting, like, it normalizes these big shots. Yeah. So if there's somebody who's, like, a bit a millionaire investor or they've exited a few companies or it's Joe Mullings or whoever it is, except for Joe because he's, he's in his baller office. But most of the other lad, like, right, I'm looking, like, their kids are noisy in the background right now. And we're all. It's the same. All, thing so it, it humanizes everything and you just be really honest and open and it, it makes for great content it does. but to uh to answer your question with the with our senior hire who's coming on in july is going to do uh, microsoft and um, she's going to have her own podcast and then i'm going to support her with my sourcing team as well so we have a system that takes away all the administration from the recruiters so they're just free for calls coming in and they have the media yeah. on the front end to do it and we're going to replicate what we've done in rack to rack but in a better field love it that is one of the biggest struggles sometimes when companies at least being an in-house guy listen i know that you don't like us but I'm it's the same you've got great hair i it just ropes <laughs> me up the wrong way you know oh 
Thanks. Thank you. But no, I think is this your Corona things. hair? You shaved it. Yeah. This, this, this yeah, is my Corona hair. Yeah. Actually, if you see like the little wing tips out here, look at this. It's ridiculous. I was, but I would kill for that. Go on. <laughs> okay. You got some. You got some hair there, Paz. Yeah. <laughs> um, the hair's growing. But anyway, <laughs> one of the biggest things. That I'll let my I, Corona like, hair fly. Don't really kind of invest in or they don't really understand is just like how much daily crap in-house recruiters have to do right oh. so they don't give you a coordinator so like we're scheduling we're sourcing then we're screening and then like well how come you don't have more people in the pipeline because i have an hour and a half to source in a market where we're you know yeah so all that stuff i have all that automated so uh, we got to talk about that i'm talking to um i you, i just you should probably email talk anyway you know, a hundred percent. I actually just checked my email from like a, when we originally connected like two weeks ago. So I'm going to yeah. schedule some time to get on the, uh, on the show and we can talk about automation. Cause that's something I know yeah. zilch about and I need major and, help. And, th and that's so fascinating too. I mean, we talk about all those administrative tasks for a recruiter. If you take so many of these elements out of it, you outsource it, right? You do it at a, you think about the hourly time. Like what is my time worth hourly? So you're paying me X amount hourly to handle scheduling all this back and forth bullshit versus the real true value of a recruiter, which is recruiting. Right. No, that's now on the head and relationships and that and that's it and that's a problem i have with in-house too when they don't give you the right support and then they worry to sean's point why is this not moving why are we not doing this because i just spent 40 minutes going back and forth to schedule a, a, a hiring manager's phone conversation that's right. bullshit. My, 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 wife, my wife was a, a high level uh, talent acquisition person for chevron and oh. uh, that's not head hunting right because everybody comes to you it's uh, it depends on the role point of of administration and I, what we did with our agency bit is we documented every little piece of admin that there is in the supply chain from fixing the resume finding the resume sending the resume scheduling the call with me sending the terms of business to the client sending the resume to the client scheduling that the, the all of that and while all the time i'm involved in that for when we need the influence piece I love before it. after and uh, uh in the follow-up stages that's awesome and i know sean has to drop off sean final final thoughts here on which part? On anything. Um, just, what the hell are you thinking about today, man? I know you and I, I text know, all man. the time. Like I, I try to gauge your mood sometimes. I mean, we start <laughs> off, we start off cynical. We go from like cynical to realistic to just complete, utter insane nonsense to um, paranoid. We do get a little paranoid sometimes. Yeah. We we do go there. Sometimes we get a little, little lovey dovey. We go in different directions there. But what do you, what do, yeah. what are you thinking about? What are you feeling from this conversation? Do you feel inspired? Do you feel enlightened? Do you um, have you had that aha moment with Dalta here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the pivoting is really important. I think one of the things that, you know, other than being an in-house guy, you know, um, one of the things that everyone could be doing is even thinking about ways to pivot. I mean, like, I'm very lucky to be in a for, uh, in the situation where I am now that I have a contract. Like, I got this in the, the shit storm where it was happening, right? So, yeah, like, yeah. the pure shit storm of this entire thing. Um, I, and it was all because of networking. Like it was all because of networking. It was because I, I met one of my, uh, I met my buddy who got me the gig down at Grace Hopper in 2018 in Texas. Right. Yeah. And that was all because of networking and keeping in touch and just doing that and building like relationships. So if I did learn anything, you know, from this conversation is that, you know, relationships aren't only just, you know, a buzzword that you talk about in recruiting, it, it actually happened because that's the only way that I have a gig right now during this recession. Spot on. So gentlemen, I'm Sean off. Harvey, thanks for joining us. We'll hang yeah, on another yeah. few minutes here. Right. We'll keep, we'll keep it going. All right. See you later. Bye. Let's, see the, let's, see the, let's see what the screen does when he bounces out of here. Nice. See, I just built this new screen, right? I got this whole new layout here and I, I'm like the little producer. I could add things. I could take it off. I don't want to do that. I just right. block, block your face. I could have double Adam. Like there, there's a couple of me, uh, up there. It's fun and everything. So one of the things that I love to talk about is being in business with your partner, with your spouse. Um, during this time, um, let's talk about like stress levels. Let's talk about like really having somebody who truly understands what you're going through because you're partners and you're in the same industry and you both get it. Pros, cons. Cons. <laughs> They're all cons. 
And we spoke about this on my podcast. I remember saying, like, when you guys go out for a date night, how do you guys separate? Uh, well, now oh, you have the au pair. So maybe, no, maybe, no, no. maybe your date night will be on your front steps, right? That's how you get the hell. Wifey and I did that. We went in the backyard, right? Like, how do you actually have? A, we had a date night, and like, you know, how do you how do you separate that? How do you separate church no, and no, state? Look, and normally we're all right. Normally, normally, like I do the creative stuff, and I enjoy the sales side, and uh, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte likes the operation side um, and spending my money. And that works very nicely. But now she can't spend any money. There's no uh, money to be spent. Although she tries. Um, and we're locked in a room with our children. So um, and so we're basically taking turns to work, which is really hard. So like, I'll come up. I'll speak to some guy that's scaling a multi-million dollar agency. And I'll be like, hey, cool. Here's, here's the retainer pitch. Um, and then there's kids screaming in the background, and then sh- well, it, so it's it's a it's been a tricky few weeks. So getting the au pair on board this Friday is unbelievable. Biggest ever. like it's it, it's incredible. So it, it's been tricky, um, but it's it's normally really good. And one of the things that myself and Charlotte did when we first met is. We worked on a farm in Queensland, in Australia, and we picked beans for three months. And that was the te- that was a, a, like we lived in a caravan. It was dirty, and we had to pee outside. And we did that for three months. And you do that to get your second year visa in, in Australia to stay in, when you're a backpacker. And that kind of bond <laughs> was together. And we figured out like no matter what, okay, okay we. Jesus. We can kind of dig in and make things happen, and that's what we're doing now. We're in absolute the thick of it. Like it is, it's tough, but it is tough. I'm, I'm optimistic about the future. I'm not just saying that; I really am. I'm excited, and I know that there's an upside to this. It's a positive mental attitude, right? And I think that folks like us that you know have been through it before. We've been through adversity. We know what it's like, and we have the infrastructure too. And I think we also have our brands to fall back on. I think there's a lot of recruiters out there, whether you're independent or whether you're working for somebody else. The importance of having that brand right now, that brand recognition, and and putting yourself out there, and not even give a shit about the competition. You know, more podcasts the merrier, right? Like keep doing it, man, because yeah. uh, it's what, a level of what, effort. You said to me. What what are you going to do when everybody copies your model and does podcasting? And I said, uh, go on their podcast. <laughs> exactly. Go. Yeah, and it and and, it's, and it really is a sincere form of flattery, right? Like I've seen a lot of people, um, you know, be inspired by a lot of the work that I'm doing, and I'm getting like a lot of interesting feedback that I never had before. Really positive feedback that people see the consistency. Let's talk about that too. So the work that we put in, you and I, to having successful businesses parlays into the work that we do for our podcast. They take work. They take effort and consistency, and, and that's what I always say is what makes a good podcast shine, right? The week in, week out, like getting that show out there, putting a good show out there every week, and that's how you build up the brand reputation, the brand recognition, and then it's all going to pay forward with the business side, right? Yeah, well, like I, I've i gone through periods of mine being really good, and then I think it's dropped off, and I got, I got a bit fed up with it before the COVID-19, and I stopped it because um, all the stories are kind of becoming the same. Um and now it's great because everybody's fucked. Nobody knows what's happening. Everybody's having to learn something new. Everybody, nobody has any money. It's <laughs> it's mixed for the best content ever. And of course, rich recruiters are broke. And I'm in people's living room, and I can't get enough of it. And I'm doing it every day. So let's talk about your living room. Who put the uh, design on those curtains back there? That would be Charlotte's mother. So be careful now. She's not following the show. She's definitely, she's definitely not on the show. So I, I want to wrap it up. You know how much you know how much I love and adore you, man. Uh, you've been a great ally, uh, a good friend here, and I certainly appreciate you. Um, so I want to wrap it up and let's let's end this on a positive note. Um, you got the au pair. That's awesome. Wifey's good. Uh, you're gonna hopefully have some less time with the kids, which is a good thing. But all kidding aside, man, let's talk about some silver linings here. Um, I'd love for you to bless us with a professional silver lining and a personal silver lining that you uh, have experienced in the last uh, month plus. Fuck. Oh, God, I didn't yeah. know he was going to ask that. Fucking hell. Uh, that's a wanky American question if I've ever heard one. Uh, uh, it's okay. Come on. You gotta get... you're gonna... No, you're going to ask me that at Thanksgiving or something. Um, <laughs> uh, let's end it at that. I'm too cool to answer your questions on that. Um, no, professional, I would say, um, it is 
getting in getting into a new a new area in July. That's securing that hire, having that done, having that the plan in place, and being excited about that. Professional or sorry, personal is well. We were in Santa Barbara when this kicked off, and I was thinking of moving there. And now this is readjusted and reevaluated my risk levels um, and the business that I want to build. And now I'm going to move to Portugal. So that's going to happen in January. And Ooh. Yeah. Like in the um, area? I'm going to do it for a bit. Uh, in Porto. Um, Porto is awesome. We're going to have a look for a few years. Ultimately, I think we'll probably end up in Florida at some stage when our business is robust enough to support us getting down there. Boca Vista, baby. Boca Vista. My my parents live ten minutes from Mullings. Yeah, class. Oh, that was that. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, Portugal. Portugal's a good place, man. It's uh, we were there about like two two years ago. Yeah. Um, love it. I mean, there's a few places in the world. I mean, I'm I'm kind of stuck here in New York, but uh, I go back to Portugal anytime. Um, Dalta, thank you so much for joining me here today. It's always enlightening. It's always a lot of fun, and that's what these live shows are all about, man. Like, let's just keep it upbeat. Like, let's um, you know, connect. Us recruiters got to stick together here. Uh, where can folks find you? Where can they connect with you? On LinkedIn, guy with a weird first name, D-U-A-L-T-A. -A. Um, if you want to talk recruitment, hit me up. Awesome. Hey, everybody watching, uh, I appreciate you. We'll be back tomorrow. I got a double header. Actually, I'm going to be back later today at 4 p.m. with Craig Fisher. Uh, we're going to talk about U.S. recruitment. Craig had a bump up, so we're going to have a double header today. Tomorrow, we have another double header. Um, I got Bro Dr. Brian Durick from South Florida. We're going to talk about gut health. Uh, really important. So I'm going to talk about something a little different than I normally do. We'll switch it up. We'll see how that goes. And then at 3, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have my old friend Sarah Sheehan. She's the founder of Brave, Bravely, um, which works with employers on mental health benefits for their employees. It's going to be pretty cool. And we're going to do a live podcast recording at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Dalta, take care. Give my Good love man. to the family. And everyone watching, catch us later today for another great episode of the podcast live. Be good. Take care. Hey, no.